Thank you for tuning in to Gospel Kingdom TV. My name is Pastor David Bentoncourt, and you are watching uh, this program today, which is called You Shall Receive Power When the Holy Spirit Comes Upon You. Amen. We're going to get right into the Word of God. It's in the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 11. And the Word of God says, And he shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. And here is talking about the sovereign Lord that was going to provide for his people. Amen. You know, we understand that Jesus Christ is the good shepherd. Amen. And God's people, they are his sheep. It doesn't mean that uh, you're a sheep or uh, we are sheep, but we are God's sheep. Amen. Uh, because it, it talks about that when the shepherd speaks that the sheep hear his voice. And if you're a child of God, you will hear the voice of God. Amen. But it says here in, in uh, verse 12, it says, Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and meted out the heaven with a span and comprehended the dust of the earth in, in a measure and weighed the mountains and scales and hills in a balance. And here it's talking about a sovereign God that has done the science of everything. That he's calculated the world. That he's calculated your disease. That he saw your pain. He saw your suffering. We're talking about a all-knowing God that has measured everything and sees everything and knows everything. I mean, that's what the book of Isaiah chapter 40 is talking about here. And you need to know that God has already done the science, that he's already calculated everything. And he sent his word to heal you. He already figured out how much power needs to be in that word. He already figured out how much healing needs to be in that word. He already figured out how much power needs to be in that word in order to heal you. Amen? Listen to this, verse 22. And the word of God says, It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens, as a curtain and spread them out as a tent to dwell in. That bringeth the princes to nothing. He maketh judges of the earth as vanity. And here again, it's talking about the God who brings change. The God who's in control. I love what the prophet Daniel said. He said, it's God who rules in the realm of men. Not government. It's God. And then he says something even more powerful, that he gives it to whomever he wishes, even to the lowliest of men. Amen? We serve the God of the shift. Amen? We serve the God that changes the seasons. Verse 28. We're on Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. says, Has thou, has thou not known, has thou not heard, the everlasting God... The Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. Again, we're talking about a sovereign God that knows everything, that has already done the science, that has already calculated everything, amen? And then it says here, he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen. I love uh, what uh, Pastor Josie shared earlier. She was talking about the eagle. Amen. You know, so I'm kind of jumping on the same scripture she shared. Amen. So this is kind of confirmation here. Amen. But here it's talking about, but 
but they that wait upon the Lord. And she was talking about patience, but I love what it also means here. It means to hope, to hope in the Lord. That actual, that actual word wait means to twist or to bind, but it means to expect where we get the word hope. I love what Apostle Paul called the Lord. He called him the God of hope. See, I, I believe this word right now that I'm ministering to, this word that I'm ministering right now is for the struggling believer. Maybe for the backslider. Maybe for the prodigal son. Maybe for the barren pastor. But this is a word for somebody who is struggling. And if you're struggling to serve God, you are in a good place. Amen. I believe I heard one of the ministers tonight shared that out of your struggling will come strength. Amen. That's how God develops our strength. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm a little under the weather today. But this is a word for somebody who's struggling. And you got to understand that God is sovereign. He is in control of everything. He's in control of your enemies. He's in control of the seasons. He's in control of the devil. He's in control of the angel death. He's, he's in control of the angel death. Amen. He's in control of your life. Amen. And he has power over everything. And even though you might feel weak, he wants to let you know that you shall overcome. Amen. This pit is not going to destroy you. This battle is not going to destroy you. What you're going through right now, it's not going to destroy you. Amen. This disease that you're going through, it's not going to destroy you. This sickness is not going to kill you. Amen. Uh, your financial problem, these bills or that report is not going to stop you. God has a plan to bless you. But the word of God says here, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagle, eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And I love what the word of God says that even the young people shall faint and be weary and the young man shall utterly fall. But those who hope in the Lord, come on now, shall renew their strength. And that word renew means fresh. See, we serve a God who does fresh things. He does new things. And I believe that in this season, God is about to do something brand new in your life. Amen. That he's going to give you strength. Amen. Your struggle is going to turn into strength. Amen. I believe that this word is for those people that might not be going into church, but you're trying to just make your rent. You're, you're living at a motel. Amen. You're living in the momo. Uh, you're just trying to hustle. You're just trying to make ends meet. But I want to let you know that strength comes from God. Power comes from God. That God is able to make you overcome. But it's an identity crisis. You need to know who you are. Amen. You might not be at the temple like all the other Christians. You might not be at the church like all the other believers. You might not be at the choir like all the other believers, but you are a child of God. You might be like the prodigal son, amen, in a foreign country, amen. You might be hanging out with the wrong crowd, amen. Even King David was hanging out with the Philistines, but the steps of a good man are ordered by God, amen. The word, that word steps, 
means company, amen? You might be around bad company, but that is a step. But I believe that in this season, God is about to order a new step. Can I get an amen? He's about to take you out of the pit and he's about to bring you into a higher position, into a higher place. See, it wasn't until the prodigal son came to his senses that he stepped out of that miry mud, out of that little pig pit and he began to make his way back to his father. Can I get an amen? You see, God has a plan for your life. He has a purpose for your life. And he wants to reveal to you that he is the sovereign God. He knows your pain. He knows your struggle. He knows your brokenness. He knows your brokenness. He knows what you're going through right now. And he's about to deliver you. He's about to heal you. He's about to set you free. A matter of fact, this is the word that he's shooting out like an arrow to you to heal your disease. I believe that God's word is his confirmation. I believe that all we need is a word from God. It says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. It's not talking about the graphal word, which is the written word, but it's talking about the preaching word. That's why you need to tune in to Gospel Kingdom TV because God is raising up preachers here and what the preaching word does it increases our faith. See, we need faith in this season to overcome. We need faith in this season to stomp on the devil. We need faith in this season for God to intervene. We need faith in this season for God to do something fresh. We need faith in this season in order for God to give us new strength. See, he's about to turn your strength struggle into strength. That's the kind of God that we serve, but it's identity, it's a, it's a identity crisis. The prodigal son for a moment forgot that he was a child in God. He thought he was a party animal, amen? He thought he was a cholo. He thought he was a prostitute. He thought he was a pimp. He thought he was a singer or a artist trying to make a record deal or trying to make a name for himself in the world. He thought he was trying to come up in the this world. Can I get an amen? But he found himself falling away from grace. He found himself falling away from his father's house. But when God revealed to him his identity, when he came back to his senses, he remembered who he was and he remembered uh, who he belonged to. He remembered that he was a child of God. And I believe this is what this scripture is saying here. It, it's talking about it's talking about that young people will faint and fall, but those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. You see, as a believer, you need to know who you are. Here it's talking about a eagle. See, as a child of God, you need to know that you are a eagle. Amen? This is a confirmation word, amen? You're not a chicken. You're an eagle. You see, God wants to let you know that you are an overcomer. That you are victorious. That you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. That you are a champion. That you are a winner. That you shall prosper. That you shall overcome. See, the, the difference of a, of a chicken and an eagle is that a chicken has a victim mentality. Hello. Right? You never hear about an eagle, uh, uh, you know, um, you never hear about, uh, that's who was, I was thinking about something. Um, you, you, you never hear about, um, uh, that was my favorite dish. Anyway, anyways, you know, when, when you when you think about a chicken, amen. You think about pollo loco. You think about chicken wings. You think about fajitas. Amen. 
Okay, that's what I was going to say. You never hear about an eagle being eagle mole. Amen? Mm -hmm. It's only chicken mole. Hello. It's the chicken that's the victim. Mm -hmm. Whenever you go to Food for Less, you'll find a chicken in plastic. Hello. If you go to the market, you'll find a chicken. If you go down the street, you'll find a KFC. But you never hear about an eagle being a victim. This is what I'm sharing to you tonight. Is that God wants you to change your victim mentality. And he wants you to understand that you are a eagle. That you are a overcomer. That you will soar above the storm. Amen. So let's go to the book of Acts. Amen. And again, here is talking about weight. Amen. In in um, Isaiah chapter forty, weight means to hope. But here in Acts chapter one, verse four, we're going to talk about weight. Amen. It says, "And being assembled together." With them commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait. I mean, if you're watching this video tonight, just say wait. Wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, Ye ha have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. That word baptized means to be wet, to be drenched, amen? See, when God gets a hold of you, you're going to be drenched. You're going to be covered with the Holy Ghost, amen? And here that word wait means to hang around. Very interesting. In the Hebrew, it means to hang around or to wait around. See, what, what's happening now nowadays is that we have the new generation, amen, the, the millennium and, and the, the, you know, the, the new people that they just want a fast fix, amen. They just want to get in there and get out, get the blessing and leave, amen. We don't serve a popcorn God. We don't serve a microwave God, amen. See, we got to understand how God works is that we need to wait for the blessing of God. Moses had to wait 40 years, amen, in order to get his mandate, to get the promises of God. The disciples needed to wait three years before they started their ministry. See, don't think that you're going to get your breakthrough in one month or three months or some discipleship class. You need to stick it out and you need to wait around until God blesses you, amen? Listen to this. Let's jump to verse 7. Uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 7. And the word of God says, And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after the, that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be my witnesses unto me, both in Jerus Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria and onto the uttermost parts of the earth. Praise the Lord. Let's jump to uh, uh, Acts chapter 2. And the word of God says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. What did the disciples do? They were waiting around. They were hanging out in the house of God because that's what God commanded them to do. Amen. It says in the book of Proverbs, a rushed inheritance will not prosper in the end. See, we need to learn how to wait on God. Amen. Even though you're struggling, you need to learn how to wait on God. Even though you're sick, you need to learn how to wait on God. Even though you are diseased, you need to learn how to wait on God. Even though you're addicted, you need to learn how to wait on God. Even though your mind is plagued, you need to learn how to wait on God. Even though you're struggling with lust, you need to learn how to wait 
wait on God. Even though you're broke, you need to learn how to wait on God. Even though you haven't gotten a breakthrough, you need to learn how to wait on God if you want to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The word of God is saying we need to learn how to wait around. And then it says here, they were all in one place waiting around. Verse 2. And suddenly, you say, oh, you see, suddenly. That means something happening unexpectedly. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven, or from, yeah, heaven, as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Amen. The Holy Spirit drenched that place the holy spirit hit that place like a flood everybody in that house got baptized with the holy spirit everybody in that house was wet with the holy ghost everybody in that house was endued with the power of the Holy Spirit. Everybody in that house was not a chicken. They were a eagle. And God was doing something fresh in them. Where God was renewing their strength. Where they were about to mount up with wings as eagles. Amen. That's what the Holy Spirit does. And, and listen to this. It said it happened suddenly. See, I don't know when God is going to bless you, amen? But all you need to do is stick around. Come on now. All you need to do is go to the house of God, amen, and be obedient to the word and just wait around. You know, even though, you know, like our church, we're having a building project, but you know what? We still got to wait around. Amen. We still got to trust God. Amen. Things might not be completely in order in your church, but you still got to wait around. Amen. Because the word of God says that God is going to do it suddenly. Amen. Where he poured out his spirit. And I love this word. It says here, and suddenly there came a sound. That word sound in the Hebrew definition means a a roar from the waves, a roar from the waves. It's the sound, the wind that comes from the waves. And I, I just want to share a prophetic word uh, for those who are waiting around. I want to let you know that in 2020, that God is about to bring a wave of glory. Amen. See, you got to be like one of those surfers and just wait around. It's just a matter of time that God is going to bring that wave. If you are in position waiting on the Lord, you are about to get hit with that wave. And that wave is about to take you to a higher place and a higher position. Amen. That wave is just going to blow you up. That wave is just going to take you to a different dimension. That wave is just going to crush your enemies. As a matter of fact, that wave is going to swipe out all of your enemies. The Word of God talks about how Pharaoh and his armies were destroyed by the wave of God. They were destroyed in the sea. Amen. And the Word of God decrees in the book of Isaiah that you will never see the enemy again. I don't know what's opposing you or attacking you, but if you could wait around, if you could hold on and wait on the Lord, the Lord is about to completely annihilate your enemies. He's, come, he's, he's about to deliver you from that addiction. He's about to set you free from those familiar spirits. He's about to deliver you from them strongholds. He's about to completely free you. Amen. And when God frees you, he's going to free your family. He's going to free your loved ones. Amen. It just takes one person to get saved. But I believe that in this season, God is going to set you free, but also set you on high. Can I get an amen? But we need to learn how to wait on the Lord. And the word of God says, and you shall receive power 
when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So you got to understand this. this. This is not just a sermon. This is not just a sermon. This is a promise. This is a promise. Is that if you could wait on the Lord. I know it doesn't make sense. I know you might not be seeing the fireworks right now. But if you could wait on the Lord. You shall receive power. You shall receive your promise. You shall receive your breakthrough. Amen. And Father, I just pray for every person that's listening, Amen. that's watching, Father God, that you would just touch them, that you would empower them. For those who wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles we thank you for the rushing wind we thank you for the strength we thank you for the new energy we thank you for your favor and we thank you that lord your grace is perfect when we are weak your grace is perfect when we are weak see god wants you to come to him with your weakness God wants you to come to him with your addiction. The Bible says to boldly come to the throne of grace. Amen. And that he could help us in, in a time of our weakness. That, that's talking about the frailty of your flesh. The frailty of your flesh. God could work with your struggle. God could, if, if, you could if, you, if you come to God with your sin, he'll work with you. He'll work with you. And he will give you grace grace for the race hallelujah unmerited favor amen god bless you be sure to tune into gospel kingdom tv for more powerful messages from the word of god jesus loves you amen god bless